Before starting any electrical project, make sure power is turned off at your electrical panel. Remove the wall plate from the wall. Then remove the mounting screws connecting the existing receptacle to the wall. Once the existing receptacle is removed, you can install the GFCI receptacle. First, take the ground wire, which is always a bare copper or green insulator wire, and insert it into the clamp underneath the green terminal screw on the GFCI, otherwise known as the ground screw. This eliminates the need to put a loop or bend in the wire. Just turn the ground screw to secure the clamp around the ground wire. The GFCI device is designed to have the power coming in to be connected on the line side of the device. The hot wire, typically a black wire, brings power to the GFCI and is connected at the line hot terminal. The neutral wire, typically a white wire, is connected to the line white terminal. Take the hot wire and insert it into either of the holes that are marked line hot. Tighten the terminal screw and it will secure the wire to the terminal inside the device. Repeat this process with the neutral wire. Insert the wire into either of the holes marked line white and tighten the terminal screw, securing the wire. If you want to continue the circuit by connecting another receptacle to the GFCI, remove the yellow tape covering the load side terminal openings and connect the wires going to the next device in the same way as the line side wires were connected, hot to hot, neutral to white. Now any device connected downstream from this GFCI would have the same ground fault protection. Now you're ready to mount the GFCI into the wall box. Secure the GFCI into the wall box using the mounting screws and reattach the wall plate, or replace it with a screwless wall plate for a more decorative look. Finally, turn power back on at the electrical panel to start using the GFCI receptacle. Other GFCI products like tamper-resistant models and nightlight combination models install the same way.